All right. Welcome, everyone, back to Annex Show. I guess you expect Brandon here at my place, but actually Brandon stopped liking Arvillian, so he moved on. But obviously, I'm kidding. And Brandon, Brandon actually moved on to his new adventure. And we, we wish you all the best, Brandon. We miss you here. And we're here now. We'll try to move ahead to Annex Show, which was really his, his child. He's, he kind of kickstarted it. So today there are lots of first timers. Uh, first Annex Show in 2022. First time me moderating Annex Show. First time me actually moderating any live show. So like, be aware of that. <laughs> first time having <laughs> Kent on the show. So welcome, yeah. Kent. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. So we wanted to talk about, like as the title says today, a bit is general about Remix. Uh, I guess like it has been the latest hotness in terms of React frameworks. Uh, we're ex excited about it. Like it, it just recently open sourced, right? It has been a lot around yeah. for for a bit, right? Yeah. Yeah, it uh, came out as developer preview in October of 2020, and then open sourced in November of last year. Cool. Yeah, we've been following along closely from the next side. We actually have also prepared some small demo about how you can actually use Remix within NX. So stay tuned for that. Like we should have some time to demo that today. Sweet. Um, but yeah, before we jump straight in, um, let's do a quick round of introduction for those few people that don't know our guests. So Kent, why don't you start you? Yeah, sure. So I am a software engineer that I, I live in Utah and um, I have a wife and four kids. Um, and up until I joined Remix back in November, I was a full-time educator for three years. Uh, I built epic react.dev, testingjavascript.com, um, a bunch of egghead courses and front-end masters and and that sort of thing, um, speaking at conferences and all that stuff. Um, and before that, I was at PayPal, and I still did all that stuff on the side. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, and then a couple other companies before that. But I, I've been doing this uh, since, I guess, a little bit before I graduated in, from BYU with the Master's in Information Systems in 2014. So I've been doing this for a little while. Um, I built my, uh, rebuilt my personal website with Remix, and I thought it was so great, I joined the company. So that's cool. That's where I'm at. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Victor, what about you for those that haven't seen you yet? Oh, uh, sure. So I uh, used to be on the Angular team at Google. And um, uh, five years ago, Jeff Cross and I left the Angular team and we started Narwhal. And uh, like a few months after, we actually built the first version of Annex, which is our the build system for. I mean, it's known as a build system for monorepos, but you don't have to use the word monorepos, just so it's such a scary word for some people. Just a build system for uh, cool repos, right? And um, I'm, uh, I'm also married and have a, a child uh, who is a year and a half, and she's very cute. And um, uh, I actually know Ken from back in the day, from the Angular days. So it's interesting to see how small the world is, where like years pass, right? And like six years after, like, oh, you know, uh, you know here we are again, you know? Things changed, but the same people doing cool things. So yeah, it's exciting. <laughs> cool, cool. Yeah, I guess like to get started, like we have, uh, as Victor also mentioned, like we have a very broad audience. We have a lot of Angular devs, React devs, and people potentially looking. So those that might have missed those news about what Remix is, like, can you maybe like give us some some good introduction, like in the sense of how it differentiates from other frameworks that are out there? What is the sweet spot of Remix and yeah, things like that. Yeah, uh, well, I could talk about this for well over an hour. So um, <laughs> I I'm guessing so. you just want like the, the two minute version. Um, so, and I'm, I'm still working on what my two minute version is. It's hard to compress this. I, I'm sure you have the same thing with NX. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the more cool you think, or like, or rather, the if you go outside of what people expect, the harder it is to explain. Unless you do the exact same thing that was done before, but better, and you can say it's just like that, but faster, right? Hmm. It's tricky because if it's something that is genuinely novel, then like how do you explain it, right? If it's novel, right? Because it's yeah. very hard to attach. Uh, you cannot attach like an existing project or something like that, right? Yeah, yeah. And the other thing is that Remix is um, uh, different things appeal to different people. So if you've been doing web dev for a long time, then you'll be excited that Remix is remixing the cool stuff that you used yeah. to do years ago with, with modern tech. If yep. you just joined the web dev industry in the last five or six years, then you'll be excited that like you don't have to do all of this extra stuff that we've been doing um, on the client side yep. for the last five or six years. So um, like managing state um, as much. So anyway, the Remix is a web framework that is um, 
uh, focused on providing an excellent user experience and making it so that you don't feel ashamed of the code that you had to write to get to that excellent user experience. Um, so it has a very strong focus on web foundations. Um, and so we, and, and then um, we marry the client and server in a really nice and seamless way. Um, so a, a lot of frameworks are either just front end with a little bit of, of back end support. Uh, and then you have to kind of figure out how to wire those up together or they're just back end. And they're like, we send HTML and from there it's all you. Um, Remix, it, we're, we're starting in the middle and then we're kind of eating everything out from there. And that uh, enables us to do some really awesome things for the user um, as like just to get things started um, from like a, as, as a default. Um, and then um, the developer experience there is really awesome. Because I'd, I'd say that uh, the um, that connection between the client and the server is probably the most difficult part of building a web app, or at least mm -hmm. uh, one of the most difficult parts, especially um, something that like literally everybody has to deal with. And so Remix manages that extremely well. Um, so that's that's what Remix is in a nutshell. Yeah, I, I, I like your answer. It's a good answer. The thing, I remember the first time I, I saw it, and I, because I, th I agree with the client server bit, you're like, like, you know, you can render to your comp components now using like a variety of technologies, right? And, you know, obviously there are ways to do it, you know, easier, like optimizing for different use cases, but the client server bit and the, uh, the state management that comes with it, when you're like, I have a state on the server, state on the client, so I now have some way to synchronize it, you know, and the sophisticated, I mean, or rather sophisticated tools that, you know, allow you to do it in all sorts of ways, right? Using special query language and stuff, right? Yeah. And it's, uh, it's tricky, right? So I, I agree with you. So I, when I saw it, I actually, my first thought was, oh, it's like Rails, but in reverse. And, and I mean Rails in a good way. People some, like have bad things about Rails, like ORM, but the good part of Rails, which is you could build, I mean, when you were like, back in the day, 10 years ago, right? Uh -huh. like the whole web app, right? In like a few days, and it would be legit. Right, and it mm -hmm. would work, and it would, you would say, "Yeah, I actually understand what's going on." Right, I could actually craft that thing fairly quickly. It's just because Rails was done, you know, uh, like back in the day, right? The focus was on the, on the back, and the front was like an afterthought, right? Mm -hmm. You basically, you know, spit out ERBs and stuff, right? And those are the things that kind of do a bit of dynamism. In the mix, I always feel it's like in the, in the words in a good way. Well, now we know that you know the front has to be robust, uh, but you still have the same kind of. I can actually move super quickly. And the client and the server don't feel as divorced as with some other things. Right? So mm -hmm. I, I like it a lot. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, like I've I've also been around in software development in general, like for quite a quite a while. So I've I've seen jQuery rise. <laughs> so I, yeah. I guess like that speaks a bit to my age. But like yeah. I, I remember basically when we had like at the company I was at that time, those backend developers like trying to to create great UIs. And that was like basically the start when people started demanding like those, those richer UIs, more interactivity and yeah. stuff, right? It was really hard time. Like I, I basically followed along with the coaching of moving them more to the front end as well, like to understand how APIs work, that kind of stuff. So I was really excited like when I saw like the, the kind of remix base which you get on, on, on the remix side where you have the good tooling, which like now basically you got over the years in, in the front end space. But you can easily easily integrate both of those. Uh, could you maybe mm -hmm. speak a bit? Like, I guess like we have also some some viewers that are not super familiar with like how that connection between the server and the front end works, right? Because like most of us are now in that phase where yeah, you got to create an API and you got to create like this client side part and you kind of have to synchronize them and maybe even different mm -hmm. teams, right? So how does that work in in Remix and, and what makes it so special? Yeah, yeah. So like when we're talking about the specific implementation. Um, I think it's important to call out that Remix uh, runs in Node, the, the server does, but it actually also runs in non-Node environments as well. So uh, Cloudflare Workers is a, a good example that people are really excited about right now. I'm really excited about it because it's kind of changing what web performance means. Um, I mean, do you, <laughs> do you need to show your user a pending state if you can get them the full app experience in like less than 100 milliseconds? Um, maybe not. <laughs> I don't need a flash of a loading spinner. Um, so yeah, and Cloudflare is, is one of the companies that is making that sort of thing possible. Um, and so um, 
that that's an important aspect of Remix is that it doesn't rely on Node. It's just a, any JavaScript environment, pretty much. Um, I know Fastly has their thing. Uh, AWS has a, a Lambda at the edge. Um, and then Fly.io is also at the edge, but uh, it is a full node server. Uh, and then Dino is working on their Dino deploy. And so Remix runs in Dino as well, or we're working on that uh, to be official. Um, it, it can work. You just have to do some funny things. So what, eventually we will have it so you don't have to do those funny things. It'll be built in. Um, so that is one aspect of the implementation is that it, it can run anywhere where you can really run JavaScript. Um, and so uh, as far as like the what the user see or the developer, <laughs> I, I, I build tools for developers. So our users are developers. Which is the user. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're so, in the same space. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, so what the, the developer user uh, experiences is you have, well, I guess I should mention also that uh, Remix has nested routing. Um, so where most um, React frameworks at least, um, and, and actually lots of uh, frameworks um, have maybe a file system that uh, represents the route. Uh, each one of those files is responsible for the entire page when that route is active, uh, including like the top nav, footer, all of that stuff. Um, whereas in Remix, the, um, we have nested routing from a file standpoint, but also uh, from the, the UI standpoint as well. And so when you have this uh, sub route that's going to be within the the, uh, the context of its parent. So this nested routing actually enables a lot of really cool things uh, that that Remix can do. So um, when you're writing a Remix app, when you're writing one of these route modules, these files, uh, you have the part of that file that's um, responsible for rendering a component. So it just exports as a default export the component that you want rendered there. Uh, and then you also export right in that same file uh, the code that loads the data. And so uh, that code runs on the back end, on the server, um, whatever environment you're running in. And so you can either like talk directly to the database, um, or you can hit uh, the back end APIs that your back end engineers are working on, or whatever other um, you know, things that basically everything that you used to do within your component to load data, you now do in your loader, which runs on the server. Uh, this has a couple of really cool implications. One of them is uh, all of that code that you were shipping to your users, uh, you no longer have to ship to your users. That's all running on the back end. Um, there's uh, some cool caching um, aspects to this as well, because we rely on the browser ca uh, cache for those uh, that loader data. Um, and so we don't have to worry about like, um, uh, garbage collection or anything, because the browser already implemented that. Uh, so like we don't have this really complex uh, caching library that you're using. It's all just like using the platform APIs for that sort of thing. Um, mm -hmm. And then we, we have the opposite of that, um, of like updating data. And you do that in the same, fi same file as well. You render a form, mm -hmm. and then you have an action to handle uh, submissions to that form. So yeah. yeah. Right. The, <laughs> so that's the cool part idea. is also that, that that you have it in the same file, right? Like you have those loaders yeah. as well as like the front end component basically, or like yeah. front end component. That actually renders on a server as well. So yeah, exactly. Like yeah, front end component, but like yeah, <laughs> you have it have it mixed together. Like, is there even yeah. like a need for an API? I guess like you could create an API, right? You could just create like a loader function that exports like a function in general, like that that gets yeah. uh, basically access over a route. But is yeah, there still yeah. an oh. is there a need for that? There, there is, yeah. So we have um, this concept called resource routes that are basically, if you don't export a component, um, mm -hmm. then that's not UI. And so we'll just call the loader when the user lands on that page. Or, or you can just export an action and mm -hmm. make a post request. So stuff like sure. webhooks, um, RSS feeds, um, mm -hmm. like uh, even generating um, social images. Uh, uh, somebody dynamically generates the Tailwind build output in a resource route. So at, oh, at runtime, they generate uh, mm -hmm. the Tailwind uh, CSS and, and just send back a string of CSS. Mm -hmm. So really, really powerful conceptually. And then of course, like you could um, use Remix to create a REST API for your mobile client mm -hmm. or something like that. So uh, sure. yeah, lots lots of power there. I like originally, we'd never really planned on Remix being um, useful for that in particular. It was all just like, this is for building mm -hmm. websites. Uh, but when we came up with re resource routes, it's like, oh my gosh, like we can actually do a lot of really cool things with this. Uh, you could, uh, I, I'm 
kind of thinking that uh, Remix would be better suited for lots of use cases over Express or Koa. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's pretty sweet that yeah. way. Yeah. Yeah, because oh, you just sort of cool. return a string, and that's an API, basically, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, you return a response, and and the response yeah. is uh, like a a web platform response as well. Yeah. So like a lot of people are enjoying spending more time on MDN than in the Remix docs when they're learning how to use Remix, which I think is pretty cool. Yeah. Oh, that sure. is cool. Yeah, they actually, the focus on the web is one of the things that I noticed as well compared with some other old, sort of older frameworks because everything comes in waves. At some point, they're like, let's focus on the web. Then like, forget the web. The web is garbage. We have our own <laughs> completely different platform. Then like, okay, actually, let's focus on the web again, right? Because, and it, it's a good thing. So some, you know, it's not like everything new is old. No, no, no. Like the situation changed, right? The environment's changed. The capabilities right now that we have are better, right? Mm -hmm. So it actually makes sense to revisit some of the things from the past and say, so which of them apply and in what way, given that the, the environment is different, right? So yeah. we can do many things differently, right? So yeah, it's not a pendulum, it's a spiral. And we're going, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So you get informed <laughs> by the past. It's actually one of the things, like when people think, of how do I, what cool stuff do I create? Like, look at something from, I don't know, 10 years ago that is no longer present and see which one, which part of it can I use, given that now the situation is different, right? Yeah, if you look exactly. back in the day when JS just came out, it was very slow. Well, now, you know, when it, when it became fast, suddenly everyone looked, everything is JS, right? And yeah. Like, it, it's cool to see. Uh, there are actually two things, the two, uh, like, a, like a bifurcation of my conversation here that my head can, can go. We can either go into one thing, which is Remix, uh, like an other full stack uh, solutions, right? And we can talk about what, like, why full stack is good. Maybe sometimes it's not as, like, you know, just that idea. And the second idea is state management, which I think is, uh, the, the, when you describe like uh, you know the whole uh, loader action thing, you know, and, and c comparing to some other ways of managing state, because I do think the ease of use at the end trumps everything else, right? And loader action is easy to use, right? Mm -hmm. So I like it. So you can pick which one, which direction you want to go. Either like let's you know talk about other frameworks, not in a negative way, just you know. So if people know, you know, Next for example, and say, well, it's you know maybe you feel some familiarity, but you know it's different in so many ways. So like as mm -hmm. you pointed out, Nest routing is different, and you know perhaps more flexible, right? Yeah. Or we can go into the whole state management thing, right? And just ignore the other frameworks. Yeah. I think well, like in, in general, like it would be good to, to sorry, sorry, kind for interrupting. Like there, there has been actually questions in that direction, right? Like that, that's, I guess like you get those questions a lot. Like what is the difference like to, for instance, Next.js, which has some similar things, but like then they're quite different at some, to some degree, right? So, yeah. so one question was, for instance, like what is the loader and to get server-side props difference like there? And where are the advantages? Yeah, yeah. So they're conceptually similar. And um, we are very, very soon, sometime this week, probably going to come out with a, an official comparison between Next and Remix. So uh, people can see both from the technical standpoint, as well as the user experience standpoint, uh, why Remix is superior. But um, uh, I can address that specific question um, since it came up. The um, get server side pro or and the thing with Next is um, they will help you get the initial data on the page, but like keeping that data updated is your responsibility, which is why you have SWR so that uh, you can use their hook. And now, like, so they're kind of, they kind of bolted that on, that feature on, um, side loaded it with a library. Uh, whereas Remix, the loader will get recalled anytime there's a mutation. And so this kind of like, covers both of the directions you were wanting to go, Victor, because the um, in Remix state management, uh, or s I suppose you could think of synchronization across the wire is a first class citizen. And so I actually just tweeted yesterday, I was thinking about it. Um, and sometimes people will ask, well, can I use Redux with Remix? And um, for anybody who's used Remix for a while, it's kind of a, a silly question. Um, but of course, it's not a silly question for somebody who's who's getting into it. But uh, the reason that it's kind of a silly question is because Remix kind of makes your database feel like the store. And so now you, or, or if you have like backend APIs, it makes you, those backend APIs feel like the store. Um, and so you don't really have to think about uh, keeping that store in sync with, uh, you know, a cache of whatever you, like that store basically for most people is always just been a cache of what's in the backend. Um, you don't really think about that because Remix just ensures that uh, mutations will update your your cache, um, and uh, and your loaders are always just loading exactly what your UI needs. Um, yeah, there are like a bunch of different ways my brain wants to go with this, but um, 
anyway, that that's probably the biggest fundamental difference. Uh, I suppose the other is because of nested routing, uh, Remix knows which of your routes need to uh, get updated data as the user's navigating around. And so we don't have to reload like all of the data on the page uh, or worry about like avoiding doing that um, because just Remix naturally uh, handles that for you. Mm. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, the nested routes is particular. Like once you use a system with nested routes, it's it's handy, right? So you you get used to it a lot more than the flat list that doesn't work mm -hmm. out well for like, especially for like enterprise apps where it's like madness of nesting is everywhere. Right? <laughs> yeah. So I also like the the loader and action thing that uh, you folks have in a, uh, mainly because I I think that there was at some point very pop the, like a very popular thing that everything as a component was like you know just make everything as a component. Well, sometimes it's good to have things that are not components if it's you know it's good for ergonomics, right? Mm. Like I find that React server components is like it's the same as like we're going to load data in a component regardless of what the cost of of its complexity wise. And like I mean, I don't know if it's I mean maybe you know it ended up being fantastically useful. Like you know I don't, I don't use them day to day, so it's hard for me to assess the ergonomics of it in, in the long run. But like well, if you make it not a component but just a function you can invoke, you know. Somehow, it, it to me at least, it seems maybe because I'm you know uh, 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 like older, it's uh, I've seen different frameworks that did you know think that a bit more like that. Mm. It just seems more ergonomic, right? That not everything has to be the same thing, right? You can have different types of things if you're building a web app, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, um, we don't have to go too deep into server components, but um, yeah. basically, uh, come to me when server components can do better than what Remix can do without them. Um, I uh, I remember when they first announced them, and I was very like I, I felt some cognitive dissonance. It's like why am I not as excited about this? I feel like I should be excited about this, and I was like, oh yeah, I don't have any of these problems when I'm using Remix. Uh, and so I yeah, w Remix uh, we we posted on our blog a while back um, a comparison of the latest and greatest demo that they had for server components versus what you can do with Remix today. And Remix is um, a way better user experience um, from just like the user experience, just thinking about it, uh, as well as like actually the technical um, output as well. So, mm -hmm. um, so yeah, we'll we'll see. I mean, if, if it's better, then we'll use it. Um, yeah. But uh, right now, it's it's not. So yeah, I just think it speaks to the value of sometimes it's okay to specialize, and if you have a particular problem like data fetching and like updating data in the backend. You can have a primitive, like uh, like you know, two functions in your case, right? Mm -hmm. That can solve that problem. You don't have to unify everything. It's like a Lego where everything is of size one. It's like, like yeah, it is fine, right? But sometimes it's good to have differently shaped Legos, right? So you mm -hmm. can. So I, I I find that the fact that there is more than one thing that you can have is uh, to me it's clearer than having different very different types of components. They're all components, mm -hmm. but like they can do very different things running right? in mm -hmm. a different environment that just the capabilities they have. One can be interactive, the other one can Like just all of those things that technically it's a component, but there's so much different in what they can do depending on how it's used, whether it's on the server or on the client, that it's, uh, why is it the component in the server then, right? If I cannot do any interactivity in it, right? It has to be essentially a wrapper around data fetching, right? Mm -hmm. It just feels weird to me. Uh, so I, I actually like when I saw what you have, like, okay, that actually makes no sense to me, okay? So there is a component that is meant to be interactive. That is the view layer, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, it's over there. The data fetching, is not a component. It fetches data from a database, and it's over there, right? And it's side by side, so you don't lose any of the uh, locality or anything, right? So it's yeah. still the same stuff, right? Uh, but just different types of units used to express that. Yeah, precisely. Yeah. And because it runs on the server, uh, we also get the benefit of being able to um, call an API that's giving us way too much data, filter out the data we don't need, and send only the data that we're using, uh, which also kind of eliminates a lot of the reason why people like uh, like using GraphQL. Now, there's a lot of things to like about GraphQL, but one of the biggest things that they came out swinging with when GraphQL came out was data overfetching. And we had a big problem with that. Well, that's not a problem with Remix because you can. who cares how much data they send to you on your server? You just filter out the stuff that you don't need and, and send along what you do. Um, that ends up being quite powerful as well. Uh, and even if you decide, hey, yeah, we, we do have a data overfetching problem or something, and, and so we're going to use a GraphQL uh, client, well, that GraphQL client is extremely big um, uh, amount of JavaScript. And so you can still use GraphQL with Remix, 
Um, but we're, you can use it even better because you just use it in your loader and now you don't have to send the giant GraphQL client to your users. So you, even if you still like, basically. yeah, yeah, exactly. Even if you're still into GraphQL, that's great. Uh, just don't send that huge client to your server or uh, to the yeah, I guess like. Exactly. There is also like teaching wise to happen a lot of like unlearning if you want, right? Like I feel like people like over the years who's the heavy front end apps and now the back end set being separated, they have built up a lot of like things. Like even if you look at like Redux stores and stuff like that, similar, similar things have existed on the back end side as well, right? And now you're coming with your tool set and you, you, you find out that things are actually getting simpler because like you can just like use the primitives that you already have. So I feel like there, is, there needs to be a lot of unlearning. At least like that was also yeah. kind of my, my experience a bit playing around with Remix, like you you try to apply the same things which you have learned in the front end space, right? But it's actually pretty simple, right? You can just like um, proceed um, like with primitive stuff, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, related to that, like especially about like the front end caching and, and stuff like that, like in terms of like shared state, I think that that plays a bit also into the, um, the whole nested routing thing, right? Because you still, like you build those individual routes, even nested routes, but you still have that kind of, shared state to some degree in the sense that you have like your maybe your layout page and you have a nested route inside there where like similar to this question you want to like reuse some of the data like usernames stuff like that mm -hmm. how do you approach that in remix or is there anything like share like sharing states between routes or, or stuff like that sure yeah like you have access state? to um we have this hook called use matches that um, gives back these matches objects of every route that's active on the page, and that includes the data um, from, from their loaders. And so, uh, yeah, you can access. Uh, this is really common, especially for the user, the currently logged in user. Your root route will uh, load the user, and then all the other routes on the page, uh, at, or, or even components that are rendered uh, at various times will need that user. Uh, and in, in my app, on my website, I just have a, a hook for this because I, I do it so much. And so I just made a special React hook that says uh, use user. Uh, and also, like, not always is the user logged in. So I have a use optional user. So if you use use user, then it's required and you're going to throw an error. And Remix has great error handling, by the way. Um, but uh, if, if you use optional user, then it'll just give you null um, or, or the user. Uh, and so, yeah, this is a definitely a solved problem in Remix. Um, the one thing that I should mention is that um, on that that's how it works in your components. Um, outside of your components in, in the loader and stuff, um, you do not have the ability to share data between loaders. And the reason for that is um, that automatically turns on a waterfall effect. So we have to call this loader, and then we have to call this one, and then this one. And sometimes they may like have a critical dependency there, so that might be useful. But most of the time, that's not the case. And so you just put your, your app on the slow track by um, requiring a certain order of those things to be called in. So um, that's, mm -hmm. that's one place where uh, if you do need the user in both of those loaders, you're going to need to get the user in both of those loaders. Uh, but that's also a, a pretty easy, uh, well, first of all, uh, it's not necessarily a problem. We've been doing this for years. Like any any API that you call, um, that API has to go get the user. Like exactly. so, uh, this has always been a problem, if you want to call it that. But if it actually is a problem for you, then it's actually pretty uh, simple to uh, to manage through caching and stuff. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, sharing that um, pretty much. If if you have a common problem in building websites, uh, Remix has thought about it. Um, Remix is, is production. We wouldn't have gone to 1.0 if we didn't think it was production ready. So uh, definitely we solved the, those sorts of problems. So related to that, because like just I saw pop up like another question, like what, what is Remix not made for? Like what is like yeah. things where you say like, yeah, you're better off like doing something else or? Yeah, so I actually like can't think of um, any tool that is better suited for uh, building websites than Remix. But I can think of uh, different use cases that don't benefit as much from the Remix features um, as others. So uh, a good example is um, if you have like a single page and there's there's no routes at all. It's like a dashboard. It just has a bunch of widgets on it. Um, without routes, you're not going to benefit as much from the nested routing and, and lots of the other features. Um, and for those types of applications, most of the control is up in the, the URL string. Remix has good support for URL strings. You have this use search params um, that you can set search params and stuff. Um, one drawback and, and something that we will be working on is um, 
uh, being able to set like an individual part of the URL string and have uh, the components that rely on that part be the ones to render rather than like all of the components would re-render with our, the way we have things currently structured. I'm pretty sure you could work around that, but um, that's one uh, use case that uh, may be a little bit more challenging. Um, but you could get pretty darn far with what we have today without running into any serious issues. So uh, that that's one. Um, yeah, e even if you're building like a game, you're going to have user management areas of your app. So Remix is going to help you with that. They might not help you with the actual game part, um, but everything else uh, Remix will help you with quite a bit. And I can't think of any other tool that you would use that would be any better um, for the game part anyway. So may as well, uh, like at least you can get Remix's awesome fast compiler and everything else for you uh, that is kind of mm -hmm. built in. Um, and I feel like, oh shoot, there was another one I was thinking of. Uh, oh yeah, so another thing that we are planning on uh, focusing on in the near future is real time. Uh, so we don't have like built-in real-time support. I don't know of any other frameworks that do, um, but uh, but we want to. Um, so we want to have built-in support for like web sockets and, and stuff like that. I think, th and the only reason I think that that is worthwhile is because we can do better um, with an integrated solution than you could do yourself, um, which is what you have to do with other frameworks right now uh, anyway. So that, that would be another use case where we're not going to help you a ton right now, um, but we will in the future. Cool, cool. Awesome. Um, do we want to move over, Victor, to, to some demoing of the NX, NX integration and discuss some of that? Uh, sure. Let, I demo. can quickly show what I have. And uh, just to set expectations for folks who haven't <laughs> seen the video on Twitter is that, that our first attempt is more like a what can we do if we spend a day, you know, so it works, right? That's sort of the idea. So, uh, uh, so if you see something not working exactly right, well, you know, it's just what it is, you know, <laughs> so, because more things, as you as you know, right? Unless you battle test it with real projects, you kind of, you know, uh, it takes time to figure out things that don't line up, especially for the tools that are very integration like, right? Anything that is not like an abstract idea in the sky, right? But Anything that integrates a bunch of tools, you cannot even test that because <laughs> <laughs> who knows what those things do, right? So you actually have to try to use it legit. So I'll quickly show it and then we can chat up more about it because I'm actually excited about it for a few reasons. One is that we have, um, uh, like in the React space, right? Our, our focus was in this sort of mostly in, in four areas, right? For for uh, for for this uh, for a while, which is the React micro front ends area, or like just you know plain React apps, you know, for large companies that, you know, build everything from scratch or whatever, right? React Native, where uh, I think more than 90% of React Native is just, you know, match made in heaven because you can have different versions of the app in the same place, sharing code, blah, blah, right? And uh, we, Gatsby, but Gatsby is, uh, you know, that's a separate point. <laughs> it's not as hot, perhaps, as it used to be. And Next.js. Next.js was a, is a big deal, right, uh, for a lot of enterprises and, um, and for a lot of folks who are not enterprises as well. And I think that Remix is really can be a, a good choice for a, a bunch of the same type of clients, right? So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not going to say which one is. I, I like I have my own preferences, but you know, it's not for me to say what people choose for what reasons. It you know doesn't matter, right? <laughs> what I see, I think Remix is cool, and I would like to have the support that is just as cool, right? So mm -hmm. right now it's uh, uh, just a bit more work because it's just the first uh, attempt to do it. Uh, but I hope that in the future we can make it just as cool. So if you are, you know. Uh, a giant super company with like a thousand people working on a project, you can just pick between the options and it's the same, right? In terms mm. of quality of support that we offer, all right? So I'm going to try to share my screen. Let's see if it's going to work. Okay. Uh, I think it's uh, this one. Okay. Okay. Okay, one second, folks. I might have to unfortunately rejoin. <laughs> uh, Okay, I'll see. Usual update problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So <laughs> Mac I'll be back. I'll be back in just one second. Okay, I'll be back in just one sure. second. Sure. I had the same sure. problem no I, problem. Uh, when I got this new MacBook, but I don't. I don't care how many problems I have with this thing. It's amazing. Um, I actually haven't had many problems, but it's so great. The new M1. Finally... Yeah, yeah. My goodness, this thing is out of this world. It's so fast. So really happy. I've happen. heard awesome things just about it. Just looking forward to get a new one as well. So yeah. Okay, cool. So uh, you're going to need to your mic, I think, Victor. Oh, that... okay. Okay, let me see. 
Yeah, it, it probably switched to a different one. God forbid it preserves the option side. Pick last time. Okay. How about there you go. That sounds great. Okay, awesome. cool. Uh, anyway, so I have here, I just to save some time so we don't, you know, look at me typing and running PM install. This is what I ran, right? I passed an R remix as a preset, and the preset is basically just scaffolding. Okay, it doesn't do anything super magical, just scaffold everything. So it's easier to, to get started. You don't have to use it. You can do it after the fact. The R remix app in the apps folder, and uh, there is nothing magical about it, right? It just does, uh, like we just invoke same NPM scripts. We're not, you know, wrapping anything, doing, we're not doing anything special, right? So if I try to serve it now, it will, uh, and I can invoke any script, you know, using an X, obviously. We do it. In this way, I mean, it does work. Okay, that's cool. Right? There's nothing special. Okay, if that's what we, we, we did, you know, that wouldn't be that impressive. <laughs> uh, the one thing that, of course, because it's uh, an X, you know, the caching works, you know, etc. So it can happen, uh, can help you a bit on the CI. You know, locally, I don't think it makes that big of a difference in this particular setup, but in CI, it can, right? And obviously, distribution will work as well. Uh, remix specific stuff, right? So one thing I can do in here that I can create a Lip, and I will talk about what I want to get from it in the next version that is fully legit, you know, sort of, uh, 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 and works the way I would like it to work. Right now it works, uh, and works uh, relatively well. So I can, you know, pick a library that I want to generate. And uh, in this case, I could see, you know, uh, what I'm going to get. It's a preview, so nothing has changed, you know. Uh, I mean, let's say it looks all right. I can pick some options if I care about customizing it. In this case, I don't care because it's, you know, just a demo. It's going to run an PM install because it needs to, you know, install some ways to package that library, right? Uh, so it's like fully built correctly, right? So in this case, it happened. To make VS Code unconfused, in case it's confusing, I'm going to reload a window. This is just, you know, always a good idea in VS Code when you add something entirely new with like an extra TS config to tell it, you know, like look at new TS configs, don't, you know, uh, so this is my library. It doesn't do anything interesting right now. And I could generate many more things in this library. Everything that you know about React and uh, Annex will work here, right? I could do all the stuff that I typically do. In this case, I don't care because it's not Remix specific. It's just React specific, right? I could build this library if I want to. And if I go inside, for example, over here, in this case, we do use our magical rollup executor. Uh, you don't have to. Obviously, in this case, I have a this folder right now with the library being built. Okay, so that's uh, what I have. I could uh, jump into my package.json for my app, right? And say, this is a happy org remix two. Two is because I tried it today without two and it makes sure everything works so it's not embarrassing. Uh, it worked. So, uh, libs uh, shared this or something, right? Um, and I have to run npm install to tell npm uh, Okay, so uh, to tell npm, you know, connect whatever you need to connect, you know, to, to help VS Code in case it's confused, you know. It's usually not confused. VS Code is actually fantastic. It's just, just in case not to look at some squigglies where, you know, the only thing that was required was to reload a window, right? So, and I could use this component right now, and of course it will uh, work just fine, right? So that does work, right? And uh, in general, uh, what folks do when they build uh, large apps with an X and and uh, hmm. oh yeah, it's not. It, I don't use it yet, so that makes sense. Right? And I could uh, is that they partition the app, uh, the apps, and also like I wouldn't necessarily use this component in this way in here. Blah blah blah. Right. So this is not best practice about how to write components. You know. Uh, hmm. I guess you have to install it again because it oh, yeah, is yeah. like the, the workspace. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. But thank God I have I someone to help me with my inability to comprehend. So this is good. That's actually one of the things I want to talk to uh, Kent about. And uh, it's glad, I'm glad we are all here. Let's see. I mean, it, it will work now, right? It should work. It doesn't work. Um, well, uh, there is another version over here that magically was created this morning. I don't want to waste a everyone's time <laughs> and it does work yeah right? way to think ahead <laughs> yeah it's one of those things where you know you don't want to uh, uh troubleshoot when uh, troubleshooting is not uh, helpful so you know there is a header over here and if i run this stuff over here i'm pretty sure this one will work it does work i don't know what i did wrong there it's just my stupidity i'm sure you know 
remixes is doing fantastic job there. I misconfigured something. That is like 99.9% of the time is a problem, especially when I'm you know demoing. Mm. So the, the, the thing in here that I have a, a, one library and I have one app, right? And that's okay, right? So that is that can be useful for like your know, like design system, right? A lot of companies do have design systems do it separately by a separate team, but in the same repo because then the, the clients of design system can consume it. That is cool, right? That that use case is supported reasonably well with this setup, right? If you serve the web app, it's going to build the library to make sure whatever library it consumes is up to date, right? It, it consumes the latest. The problem with this, uh, if you fully embrace sort of the structured way of building things the way we promote it, is that folks tend to partition their apps into like hundreds of thousands of libs, right? If they have a, a two million line app, they're like, oh, how about we split in such a different teams on different folders of this app, right? And it does work. And that thing is a bit awkward. And uh, like, there is an issue that we open that hopefully will make it less awkward, right? But other than that, right, if that thing is addressed, right, essentially, if we address the need to register it package the JSON, which is uh, the Yarn workspace's way of doing things, and a big part of the JavaScript community still does it, which is fine, uh, but it creates sort of awkward DX, where now you have this weird dis folder you need to point at for some weird reason, right? And there are a few other things that make the cost of creating libraries so much higher than they should be, right? But one that if you resolve that one bit, right? If we resolve it one bit, right? Uh, we can also monkey patch it. Right? <laughs> so you know, we we can do anything. That's the power of JavaScript, right? Uh, anything is in our control because you know we have it there. So, but it would, <laughs> <laughs> which we actually did for some tools where we don't have, you know, we're not friends with uh, those members. Like, well, you know, let's just monkey patch it, and here you go. You know, it's working. Hallelujah, right? So. In this case, uh, we can actually do the same thing we do uh, with, say, Next or Gatsby, where you could build this, you know, a large remix app out of these usable libraries uh, with no penalty for dev ergonomics, right? So it would be as easy as building it in a single folder, but you give more control about how you run your tests, how you lean stuff, so you can scale, you know, up to a much larger uh, number of components, or whatever. Right? That's one thing. The second thing that I want to point out is that I generated a, a suite of end-to-end -end tests for Cypress, and that's another thing that and next ten, tends to be pretty good at is at connecting existing tools. Cypress by itself, again, is a fantastic tool, a big fan. They, they're doing a fantastic job, right? Uh, the issue is not with Cypress, right? Uh, Cypress is easy to use. It's more like if you connect a few tools that are easy to use on their own, the combination tends to be uh, like it's like a, uh, you're multiplying all the idiosyncrasies, right? Like you want to have TypeScript in all of them probably in exactly the same way you have TypeScript for builds. So the type errors align, right? You want to have your like storybook and Cypress work together. And then Cypress and your web app working together. And those type of things, I think we tend to excel at. In this case, I have a, I mean, it's a, we generate a dummy test, not, nothing interesting, right? Uh, but I can run a remix app and I can run it, uh, the Cypress suite, right? Using this remix app. And it would, you know, you can start with it within like 30 seconds, right? And start building, Cypress test, and what I do, and some folks do as well, when they run the app, they run the Cypress tests, not in this way, that's not a very interesting way. Uh, they run it in an um, added way, and in a, with a watch mode. So in this case, you actually run Cypress in a headed way, meaning that with a browser, right? Uh, in a watch mode, such that you actually TDD, but not in, with components. I actually think TDD with components Sometimes provides questionable value when you're just scaffolding the app because you don't know what components exactly you need, right? You have sort of larger units that you're dealing with, um, uh, but you can TDD with Cypress specs. So in this case, you can start writing your Cypress specs, and as you write the Cypress specs, you can develop an app, right? And you have this uh, it's taking forever to run uh, the test first approach, right, to development, but at a higher level, right? We actually use uh, the browser and stuff, right? So um, uh, I think my Firefox has worked or something, so uh, I apologize for, uh, you know. Uh, okay, it's, it's starting? Okay, here you go. I don't know what happened to Firefox. Um, Firefox is so cool as well, you know, uh, so anyway, it's working, right? <laughs> so, uh, uh, so uh, but the, the point is, is simply that uh, you could um, make all of the things work reasonably well with each other with very little effort. Right, so in this case, uh, for the folks who are more interested in Annex, uh, either that or interested in building plugins for Annex, this whole plugin is just a few lines of code. And then, of course, I can generate extra rounds, like the generators you saw. Of course, we have remix specific generators as well, you know, and I can generate rounds with previews and everything like that, right? Uh, 
is that I could build this whole experience with custom generators and you know other tools integrating with that by essentially just wrapping existing plugins. So in this case, the Cypress plugin was a plugin for just the rest of React. And which is okay, let's take it. It just customized a few things, like such that, for example, this one aligns, right? So the experience is slightly nicer, right? It's really like a five line wrapper around the existing plugin and it fits in right there, right? So it works. It generates a configuration that works, right? With, uh, uh, with the Remix app. And um, you have sort of a more uh, integrated dev experience. In general, I'm a big believer in, in, in uh, sort of open integration. When you integrate, but you're allowed to swap different parts if something doesn't work for you exactly right, right? So in this case, I really think Cypress is probably the best choice for end to end testing right now. Uh, but you can pick a different one if you like a different tool. You can still have a similar integrated experience, but just swapping the end-to-end -end task part and putting a different one in, right? So that's what we have right now. It's you know it's early, so you can still use it though. So there is nothing in here that is broken on your sense. Just dev experience in a few areas is not ideal, mostly due to that, right? But we can address that. Dev experience is going to become on par with everything else we have, right? Where we can start partitioning the remix apps into uh, packages, right? And then each of those packages can go to a different CI machine, you know, and do different things in there, such that you can have a... I mean, Remix is still new, so I don't know how many uber-massive Remix apps you have, but at some point you will, right? So... Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, and uh, it just happens all the time, right? And uh, with that, like, it will scale just as well as it scales for, like, I don't know, 5 million line, you know, other React framework apps, right? There's no difference. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think that goes a lot into the direction also because like right now I, I think they use ES build behind the scenes, right? Can't like for, for yeah. building remix. Yeah. Exactly. And, and like when like an X users usually like have the different options. What we do right now is like to build libraries to link into the remix app or any other React app, right? And we kind of right now work around like that using like your workspaces and set that up, right? Yeah. Uh, in a normal NX workspace with a React app or something like that, like you just link the lips basically via the TS config path mappings. And the remix mm -hmm. app would basically build it in or the React app or the Next.js app. So like sp speaking towards that, like, do you plan to also open up like the ES build config that you have? Like, do you allow in the future to kind of somehow hook in with, with custom plugins or is that something you're looking into? No, we're not planning on doing that um, because then things get like really, really complicated really fast. And, and all of a sudden you have to make a slight change to what used to be an implementation detail and now that's a breaking change um for for people mm -hmm. um so it may at first seem like oh yeah it'd be really nice if we could just invert control and give people um power to do whatever they want um, but that gives them power to do whatever they want and what they want might not be um a great thing and so we want to be really thoughtful uh and it, like include if, if it's really a good idea then we want to build it in um yeah. so we'll We'll see. I mean, there there may be um, situations for um, like an unstable um, way to, so that people yeah. can experiment with things and, yeah. and see how things are. But for right now, we're really pushing back on opening the compiler up. No, I actually like I, I I'm uh, with with you in that providing a general catch all uh, is tricky, right? Because then you do uh, the public API you have, whether you want it to be public or not, right? Like, to the degree where we have all the deep imports we have in an X that were never part of the public. You, you can't even access them via the entry point, right? You cannot. You have to deep import and get it. We cannot change now, right? Because yeah. some enterprise somewhere deep imported that one file, get that function that's never meant to be public API. Like, let alone we export it and then change. No, no, it was always a private utility, right? Mm. And it is there. So we, and we cannot break them because those are large projects that have been around like for years, right? Like, it's very hard for us to tell them, you know, your thousands of developers are going to be screwed up because, you know, they. it doesn't matter whether they did it correctly or not. Right? They have it, right? So mm -hmm. so uh, I, I get it. So I always in favor of having explicit API built on top, sort of like an anti-corruption left. And, you know, if there is the capability to customize the result, regardless of the compiler, right? The mm -hmm. separate capability provided that is like a public capability of the framework that you can customize the result, right? And that's the only thing that we need, right? Which, we, again, we can achieve by a monkey patch, we would rather not, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if we can uh, customize and say, if you are resolving this import, just look over there, mm -hmm. right? Uh, yeah, uh, we, we might be able to, to do something like that. Um, I, I saw your issue. 
I, I don't work on the compiler as much yeah. and, or at all. <laughs> so I yeah. think I, I, I contributed one thing so far um, to that. And uh, so, yeah, when when we can get around to prioritizing that, we'll probably we want the experience to be stellar um, for yeah. uh, for everybody. And so we'll probably come up with something we can all be happy with. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Awesome. Speaking of that, like 2022, like can you can you share something that is like hot on the roadmap for a remix? Like, what are you? What is the main focus going forward, like this year? Yeah, um, one thing that we value as a company is to not talk about things we haven't shipped yet. Um, and <laughs> <laughs> nice <Yeah>. choice. <laughs> so, yeah, I, mean, I I can tell you some problems that we're we're trying to solve. Um, mm -hmm. Well, one problem that we're uh, and we have like ideas with and and will be solved pretty soon actually. Um, is um, component CSS. So right now, um, the solution for styling in Remix is really great from like a, when you're thinking about pages, um, it, you know, it's really second to none. Um, but when you're thinking about um, uh, components, then our current solution is uh, to just have like a global style sheet, you know, because the components are all over the place. We, there's not really a good way Nobody has a good way to uh, code split and um, shared chunk um, your CSS. Like there's, yeah, n not a good way to do that. Um, and so, yeah, we're, we're evaluating uh, different solutions to that problem. Um, probably very soon we'll have something built in. Um, we're also looking into images. This is uh, one of the things that we're gonna do to actually make money <laughs> is to like have an image hosting service. Um, and we'll have really, really awesome support for images. One cool thing about the resource routes is that um, we could actually build a library that you just install and use as a resource route. Um, and uh, that'll cover, and, and of course, it'll also come with a, a front end component as well. So you'll have the, the back end op optimizations, the front end uh, aspect as well. Uh, and that seamless client server will work really well. Um, and, and then we'll have a service for that uh, to make that scale beyond just your server. Um, so yeah, that's another thing. Real time might be a thing this year. Uh, we'll, we'll see if that gets prioritized with the other stuff that we've got to do. Um, ESM so, support, yeah. I guess. Sorry, oh yeah, ESM, native ESM support. <laughs> is something we're actively working on. Um, cool. Yeah, stuff like that. Very nice, very nice. Yeah, looking forward to all those changes. Let me scroll through to see whether we have any questions that we didn't answer. You know what? I'm going to tell you about this one other thing um, that is is pretty close. This mm -hmm. one, um, should I say this? I probably shouldn't, but I'll tell you anyway. This is going <laughs> to blow people's minds. Um, yeah. So, um, you know how... Like if you look at the network tab, the first thing that you see is the document request when you mm -hmm. load a page. And as soon as the document uh, finishes, then the browser goes through the HTML and it, it sees, oh, you have link tags to CSS and you've got maybe even prefetch for modules and you've got images and let me get it, go get all of the, um, you know, the, this data prefetch, all this stuff, let me get all of that. Um, that turns into a waterfall because as soon as the JavaScript loads, now let's go get our data. Well, we already solved that by um, by server rendering, so you, you don't have like let's go get our data stuff. Um, but you do like have to download that document first, and then you can go get all the assets that are linked. Um, but there is a, a standard that's been around for a while um, called the link header, and if you mm -hmm. send a link header, then you can uh, tell the browser, hey, here are the things that you're going to go need. Go ahead and get those into your cache. Mm -hmm. um, the the problem is that um, if you wait to generate your document and then s start sending it all along, you're not really buying yourself a whole lot of time um, by adding a link header. Like maybe a little bit, but not not a lot. Uh, like, yeah, actually, it could be a, a fair amount, but we're, what we're doing is even better. Uh, and so what we're going to have very soon is um, the user will make a request. We'll start sending a, a response immediately before we even call uh, your loaders to get the data and start rendering your app. And because we are your compiler and your bundler, we know what CSS files you're going to need. We know what JavaScript modules you're going to need, all of that stuff. And so we send that link header uh, right away. And then, um, and so like the browser gets that, starts downloading all those static assets. And then we call your loaders on the server. The browser's doing work, we're doing work. 
and then we start streaming the HTML. So the outcome of this is um, basically like within basically no time or maybe even by the time your document has finished downloading, it's instantly hydrated because all the JavaScript has been loaded already. So you, you take that waterfall and you scrunch things even further over to the left, or I don't know which way you're looking at me, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that's going to cool. be really cool. Like we're, we're talking, um, you know, easily under a hundred milliseconds hydrated um, for lots of apps. Um, that's, yeah, so we're looking forward to that. That's that's something that's coming pretty soon. Very nice. Fun as, fact as about that, like, just... thing, like uh, to to start out, we'll we'll see how it pans out. But yeah, awesome. Yeah, the fun fact about that is like I actually just remember like when I joined Novel, one of the interview questions went actually in that direction that Victor gave me. Like, how could you oh. optimize even more than just the bonding on the client side, which is like what, when you have the knowledge on both sides, right, the server and the client. So actually, very very cool. Yeah, you know, and one other thing um, that like for the last five years that frameworks have been trying to do is uh, reduce the size of the bundle, right? Like if you can make that smaller, then it doesn't take as much uh, to, to send and parse and all of that stuff. So it makes it faster. That's like the goal. If, if we didn't care about that, then we wouldn't care about making things smaller. So we're spending so much time to make things smaller. Um, one cool thing that we didn't talk about with Remix is that it understands um, the primitives of the web so well that even like a form request with the X W W W form um, uh, URL encoded, I think is what that thing's called. Yep. Um, those those regular browser form submissions, Remix understands those, and so what that means, uh, and and then also like the HTML that it sends with links and everything, those are anchor tags, and so. Um, what that means is as soon as your document gets downloaded, the user can start using it, um, not just for navigating around, but for making mutations. And so um, what's really cool about this is that it, it still matters how much JavaScript you're sending to the client because there are things JavaScript does that like we want those things. We can progressively enhance things. We can do optimistic UI and stuff. Um, so we do still care about um, having the JavaScript hydrate quickly, which is why we're doing this links prefetching stuff. Um, but, uh, but it matters a lot less um, because your app is usable as soon as the document shows up. Um, I think that's a really cool aspect of Remix as well. Awesome. Yeah, very, very great. Like really looking forward to those changes. Yeah. So I guess like we're at time and I don't wanna go over it. Thanks a lot, Ken, for, for joining. Uh, giving your valuable time to our stream. And hopefully we can have you at some point again at the next show and, and connect with you about Remix stuff. Yeah, thank you. I really appreciate you giving me your time and showing the, the NX de uh, demo. Hopefully we can make that even better. For sure. Mm -hmm. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye. <laughs>